Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barnett. at Looking Point. We help IT organizations make decisions around networking, security, and cloud. Today we're going to be talking about a wireless assessment and what you should know as you're planning your wireless assessment should you do one. Let's go! We're back and I'm here with Trevor and we're talking wireless surveys and wireless predictive surveys. So, all about surveys. Yes. So what are, what are some of the types of use cases? Why, why would people even consider doing a predictive? I mean, should we start with building types? Right, yeah, we can start there. Um, so, I mean, surveys are gonna be done, I mean, in pretty much every aspect of, of business, in the offices, um, in warehouses mainly. Um, outside, um, you know, outdoors, um, and they all come with their different challenges. Um, the office one is probably the easiest, uh, as far as you know. For the most part, manufacturers are manufacturing uh, indoor APs with the notion that hey, it's going to be an office. It's going to be about you know ten feet off the ground, and you can kind of get away with not having to do it. But um, in a in a more modern office where wireless is now becoming more critical. We're starting to see where even in the office, we're having to do surveys in order to get a more dense environment so we can get more people on the wireless and have faster speeds. And, and so when people say, hey, I'm thinking about a predictive survey, would you say that that's like on the top of your list of for, for wireless planning, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I would say the traditional way you would actually do any wireless planning is first do a predictive figure out the number of APs, where they're going to be placed, um, and, and that kind of gives you your, you know, your bill of materials, all that kind of stuff, uh, as well as where they're going to be placed. Place them, um, and then come back with an actual uh, post-installation um, survey to just validate that the predictive was actually right, and to maybe do some, some tweaks. And going down that route, and just that just becomes a repeatable, easy process that just delivers the, a better product. Okay, and so so I mean, you mentioned you touched on um, the office, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and and as things are getting more wireless driven, less wired connections, um, it's becoming more more important. Um, and then you mentioned warehouses. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think from our experience, warehouses are probably the more complicated of the. If you're comparing those two, yes. So warehouses come with a lot of different challenges. Very tall ceilings. Um, I've done quite a few warehouses um, now, and you know, warehouse to, modern warehouse today has like forty foot ceilings. Um, they're going to need external a access point or external antennas uh, for the access points, because uh, typically access points with internal ones can only go about twenty feet, um, and so you're adding additional complexity. Um, plus, I mean, warehouses are typically filled with a bunch of metal racks and things that have a really horrible attenuation that you know really affect wireless. Um, and so doing planning on a warehouse, getting the right um, you know, antennas, getting the right access points, um, and putting them in the right place are kind of critical in order, uh, otherwise you will just see huge holes and gaps uh, in the wireless. Yeah, and, and I think, um, you know, historically, I've, I've always seen like, hey, we take a floor plan, we go put an AP there, 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 and there, and that kind of worked uh, in office space, mm -hmm. uh, in the office spaces, and then if you, you know, missed an area, you either add an AP or take away one, but now we're seeing a lot of challenges like, hey, clients don't get good speeds, or disconnects, or when people are walking through the office, they, they have their speed really, like, deteriorate, because it's, right. it, you know, maybe they're home to, like, an old AP, and so, so, uh, I think some of the survey sets you up, I guess, for success around physical placement. Um, mm -hmm. when, when you get into the wireless survey for a warehouse, what are some of the things to consider, like as you're doing the the walkthrough of the building in in kind of like a predictive survey? What, what are the things that you think about? Um, I mean, the big stuff. I mean, is going to be the floor height. I don't know, floor height, ceiling height. Yeah. Um, where the APs are going to sit, because that's not always going to be on the ceiling. That could be, you know, a lot of times we'll, we're dropping these down probably 10 feet um, on like a pole. Um, things like, a lot of stuff that where I've actually learned is you're going to have racks, right? They're going to hold some type of thing you're warehousing. And you're going to have forklifts that go up to the racks. 
where is the top of the forklift going to be? Is it going to be able to clear an access point? Um, stuff like the type of access point, do we go with directional, do we go with an omni, the big open areas where there may be like, you know, um, unloading or loading um, the trucks, you know, an omni access point makes sense because it's a big open area, you have a really good distance, but inside the racks, right, you want these lasers, you know, kind of directional uh, antennas that are pointing the wireless uh, down the rows. So those are a lot of the considerations that, you know, go into the predictive side. Um, and then for the actual survey, uh, side, a lot of what we want to do is then validate, you know, what access points are actually um, doing what they're saying they're doing, um, and then there is some margin of being able to tune right. um, um, the access point so that we're not dealing with co-channel interference and, and that kind of stuff. And, and one of the things you touched on, which may not make sense to a lot of people, like when they hear, hey, we lowered the AP height, mm -hmm. um, and that's mainly because you want to shrink the distance from AP to AP versus AP to person on the ground. Is that right? Yeah. Or, okay. And we, there's actually, there's a project where we actually got it wrong. Yeah. Um, it was kind of earlier on in, yeah. in, in, in my wireless uh, career. Yeah. But the we actually had them on the ceiling, and they were really close together. Um, to the point where the APs, because you know, in modern, like I think these were, these were Cisco APs, um, the, the wireless controller is seeing, hey, this AP is closer to me, they're 20 feet away, but it's 40 feet to the ground. Right. So we're gonna shrink the, uh, our you know, um, power down so we're not interfering with each other, but all we've done now is say if the ground's down here, you have this bubble where you're on the ground, you're horrible wireless, but say you go up another like you know, 10 feet and all of a sudden you have a great wireless. And so having the APs be able to place them further apart, and that's again going when we're going to racks where you need them to be closer together, having directional where you're not going to, they're not going to see each other and not power themselves down right. um, becomes critical. And, and, and um, so those are all good points. Like, like you got to think about what's the physical environment. You got to think of the physical height and then where are the clients. That was another thing I think, uh, you know, when you look at the handheld scanners and things like that, they don't have maybe the same signal strength as some of the modern, maybe like a laptop as an example. Right, so the big thing with wireless is how big is your antenna? Um, a big tablet or a laptop um, is gonna have a lot more surface area to pick up the radio signal um, than say your you know handheld scanners or you know, your mobile device. And that's actually a pretty common thing and even built into a lot of the predictive software is you can actually flip between is this a laptop or is this a mobile device because we can you know simulate the smaller um, surface area that those antennas have and they essentially can't pick up the weaker signals yeah okay and, and then uh, we did a survey at our warehouse mm -hmm. and um, you know you walk through with it can you just go through the tools that typically we use on a, on a wireless survey yeah unfortunately we don't have them here we're actually using doing a a wireless survey right now. I got another guy uh, up there, so I, I don't have him with me. But uh, we use uh, the Ekahow uh, software. Um, they're the kind of considered the leader as far as the um, wireless survey is concerned. Um, and then we have the uh, Sidekick and the Sidekick Two, which just came out uh, for the Wi-Fi six E um, radios. And what essentially that Sidekick is is just a AP and monitor mode. Or if you're ever familiar with like Cisco uses the you know the monitor mode um, nomenclature, um, where it's just listening to everything in those RF spaces. Um, so anything on 2.4, the five, and now with the Psychic two, the six gigahertz um, space, the whole spectrum. It's just saying, let me know what's here, um, and then the software just maps where you are, so that it can then take all those points and then put it together in a nice pretty map. Okay, and then and then you mentioned something we were kind of chatting uh, outside of this video about the BSSID and how it's collecting signal information related to an AP and kind of where you're where you are. Right. So typically, you know, when you're walking around with just your laptop, you're connecting to one access point, and your client is making that determination based on all the different. APs that it's learning from, um, and so they have a thing called the BSSID, which is essentially the MAC address of the AP plus the SSID name. And that will both tell you that, hey, this is part of the same network, and here is a different radio. And so your client is actually keeping track of all of that and then choosing the best signal to then roam to when it hits those roaming thresholds. 
with the sidekick, because we're just getting everything all at once, we can see at any point in time who is the who is the, the the number one, who's number two, who's number three, which is something you don't typically get on a client. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And then I think that's one thing that uh, a lot of customers don't realize is that the client really controls when it decides to switch. So mm-hmm. there's things we can do to encourage it as it moves out of a cell, you know, a cell area or an area we'd like an AP to be authoritative for. But there's really no way we can really force the client to leave. They have to kind of do it, you know, on their own. Is that true? Or? Yeah, yeah. So the, I guess we call it the industry standard, even though in this industry there is no standard, everybody kind of has their own secret sauce, um, is typically the negative 70 decibels is when a, the threshold, when a client goes through its little, little uh, um, software method of, I need a roam. Um, so this is why a lot of times you'll see where uh, clients will stick to an AP and walk past, uh, you know, one, two, or three access points before then it starts to decide to roam, um, and the, you'll get, you know, you'll get complaints about, hey, it's like really slow over here, um, and that's because the, you're not roaming to a closer access point where you can get a faster signal, um, because you're still getting a really good signal from that first access point, yeah, because it's just blasting, yeah, uh, it, its power. And so you're still within that threshold of, oh, I don't need to roam, I don't need to roam, I don't need to roam from the client. Um, and so a lot of the post um, like installation stuff that we do is all about tuning uh, the access points so that we can create those smaller cells and, and give tune stuff like roaming. Yeah, encourage a client to move. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you can't tell a client <laughs> to move, but you can definitely nudge it in that direction. Yeah, yeah, encourage it. Yeah. So, okay, great. And then I guess final thoughts around... Um, just if, if someone's watching this video and they're like, hey, I'm doing an office and it's pretty basic, uh, we're just gonna put the APs. What are some of the things like from a predictive survey standpoint that you think you get um, that, that it's better than just going, oh, put one here and here and here and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I would say, are you looking for just coverage or are you looking for like actual quality of your internet? How critical is the, the wireless yeah. um, to it? Because if it's like, a, yeah, it's a good to have, we just use it for guests, we just need coverage, um, I mean, you can you can kind of go with the old school, just play some wherever, yeah. um, quite frankly. Um, but if you are actually looking at wireless as a critical component of your infrastructure, doing a predictive, uh, determining where the, uh, where the APs are going to be placed, determining which APs to use, because AP models are completely different um, from even model to model within the same uh, vendor. Um, and so those are the things that predictive, predictive surveys will actually provide is giving you kind of the peace of mind that, yeah, I'm not just spending a bunch of money and maybe it works. It's like, well, no, here's actually some science behind it. Here's some data that you know proves that you're making a good purchase. Okay, great. And then, and then if you're doing a warehouse, I mean, I think regardless of what the warehouse is and if you need wireless coverage, I, got, I, 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 I kind of feel like you would have to go, I mean, warehouses are arguably the hardest thing to get right with wireless. Yeah. Um, there are so many things that are just not conducive to, to wireless in a warehouse yeah. that just guessing, um, I know from experience, just guessing typically doesn't get you the, the correct answer the first time. Right, right. Okay, great. Well, thanks for, uh, yeah. for coming on and talking us through some wireless surveys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. All right, well, if we said anything in this video or if Trevor said anything in this video that you're like, hey, I want to know more, make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.